Welcome to the Gig Bag. I'm Chris. I'm Sabrina. We've got an action-packed show for you tonight. Now, Chris, do you actually realize it's only just under a month until Christmas? Oh, I know. I can't believe it's that time of year already. That's why I tested out a new base and a head as a good combination for a Christmas gift. Hint, hint. Of course you did. Now, with Christmas, comes good weather in Australia, which I still don't quite get. I love good weather. I think there Especially should be snow Christmas. at Christmas. Anyway, no, um, with know. the good weather comes Can't the have the Christmas barbecue then if there's snow. That's what you not do at Christmas. Anyway, anyway, with the good weather comes the festival season. And one festival in particular is Scorcher Fest, which has just begun its tour around Australia, I believe. And I went to see one of the more famous acts of Scorcher Fest, Grass Taylor. Here we are today on a beautiful sunny morning in Melbourne and I'm sitting on the couch with Grass Taylor who's going to tell us a lot of exciting things about his career in the Australian music industry and about his solo tour that is coming up. Hi Grass. Hey, how are you going? <laughs> Good. Um, so tell us a bit about how you got into music and maybe how you've spent the last few years in different bands and... Yeah, for sure. I, I started off, I, I always grew up around music. My father was in a band um, back in the 60s and uh, my brother played in bands. I've got cousins that play in bands. So it was always around me. I was destined to do it no matter what. Um, but yeah, I guess, you know, going through high school, you start to form bands with friends and then coming out of that stage, um, you know, we're lucky enough, one of the bands I was in got signed to a label and then we had a little run with that. And that sort of happened three or four times with different acts. And um, yeah, finished up playing in a band um, in Adelaide for a long, uh, a couple of years, and um, we, we decided to call it a day back in 2010. And from there, I just um, decided, you know what, I'm done with the band thing. I'm going to become a solo artist. So, what happened then? Did you start writing straight away? Um, well, for this record, it was more uh, songs that I'd written over the course of the years that maybe didn't fit. I mean, I was a punk rock guitarist and songwriter, so um, with this record it's very laid back. Um, so none of those songs are really in the acts. Um, what I did was once I finished the band stuff was go back to a lot of those songs and revamp them and uh, wrote a few new songs and basically got a bit of an album together. Hot hands and hotel linen For the skin she shares There's no repair Her body's gold Inside it's so your solo album, Poet Notes and Hidden Tones, will be released in December. Did you only do the vocals and the guitar for the solo, or did you actually play all the instruments maybe that are there? Yeah, I, I gave it my best shot to play everything. I actually got a piano player in for a friend of mine who's a wizard on the piano uh, for one of the songs um, because I'm not the greatest, um, the greatest on the keys. But uh, the drums and the bass and the guitar, and uh, I played piano on one track. Um, yeah, that was all done for, with me, and then we had a cello player come in as well. But yeah, I love what they did on the on the record. Where did you get it recorded? Um, it was actually done up in the hills in Victoria, um, in Upway, uh, with a guy called Steve Vertigan, and he's got a, a really classical background, so working with uh, the Melbourne Symphony Orchestra and lots of um, uh, orchestral uh, groups and things, so um, I wanted to bring that element into this record, and uh, yeah, he was a guy from the job, and it was a really good experience. String instruments just bring a much more of an intimate kind of feeling to the record, I reckon, rather than you coming from the big band. Absolutely, absolutely. And because it's just it's very guitar and vocal driven, we needed that subtlety of, of um, strings in the background and piano and things like that. So it was, um, yeah, it was good to have that, um, that extra element in there. So in your upcoming solo tour, I imagine that you've also stripped down a lot of the gear um, that you've been using before. What are the bare essentials that you're using for this tour? Yeah, definitely. It's just me on stage, so it'll be guitar and vocals. That, that's pretty much it. Um, I'm using a JCM2, uh, J JM200, um, which is a uh, Epiphone Elite Jumbo Acoustic Guitar, um, which is a really nice sound that um, we found in Japan. And then um, just a little LR Bags DI, which um, can sort of you know, play around the tone controls and things like that. But um, nothing too extravagant, just timber and steel and the, uh, the vocals, that's it. With one of your former bands, you supported Good Charlotte. 
What was the kind of gear you used at those gigs, and what was the stage set up like? Um, yeah, so I mean, that was an arena tour, so um, the, the first arena tour that I'd, I'd ever been involved in, and I guess um, you know they bring their own PA, they bring their own uh, lighting rigs. It's a quite a big production. Um, us on stage, um, you know, we just had our, all of our normal gear. Um, at the time, I was sponsored by Hughes and Kettner, um, so I was using a Hughes and Kettner amplifier and, and a um, Gibson um, a Les Paul Classic. But um, yeah, it was it was more sort of a bigger production type of thing. Yes. Back. Do you ever miss playing those big gigs? I think anyone would be lying if they didn't miss playing in arenas. But um, <laughs> but I, I guess as well, like um, you know, playing pub gigs and uh, over and over and over, that gets old, but when you first start doing them, it's the most exciting thing in the world, so I'm assuming that if you spend 15 years playing arenas, then it may get a little old, but I lost to put me on an arena tour, you know, you've got my number, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> so the tour you'll be doing with Scorcher Fest will go for about five weeks, when about in that period will you be in Melbourne? Uh, we'll be playing Melbourne the 9th of December, Sunday the 9th at uh, the Noise Bar. So a uh, really cool venue for anyone that's in Melbourne to have been there. Um, with a whole bunch of other bands, maybe some 30 or 40 bands on the bill and uh, a lot of, yeah, a lot of really interesting acts. So yeah, come on down. You can grab tickets um, from the Scorcher Fest website, you can grab them at my, my website, which is uh, glasstaylor.com. And uh, everyone that gets a ticket also gets the record and uh, the DVD that I'm releasing at the end of the year as well. I know your dog's been walking around for a little while. Uh, yeah, he wants, he wants to, uh, I think he wants to become um, part of the show. Come here. Come on. So this is my, uh, this is my boy Coda. <laughs> Can I say hello? Can I come up here? Say hello. Good oh boy. So yeah, this is my pride and joy. <laughs> He's beautiful. He is. He's so He's big. Good. It's hot outside, isn't it, mate?